Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of God for the people of God. So this week we continue at looking at ways that we can be growing as disciples of Jesus. Now our scripture for today is a very short one, but if you've been paying attention to our scriptures uh, for most of the week, weeks when, when we have them, uh, they tend to be much longer than just three verses, right? It's because when I'm preaching, I like to try to give you enough context around the verses that I'm preaching on in order for us to get a better understanding of what the scripture is really trying to tell us. Now, it's been said, and, and I believe this to be pretty true, you could clip a verse or two out of the Bible and use that to support just about any argument that you have. It's a, obviously a massive book, lots of information there, and if you just break it down into small clips, you can make it say just about anything. And this is because the Bible was not meant to be used in the way. It's necessary for us to read more than just one verse and to get a true idea of what the writer is trying to tell us. So then why just three verses for today? Well, if you remember last week, these verses are the continuation of the 15 that we had last week. They're verses that immediately follow Jesus talking about listening for the whispers and shouting from the rooftops. And they follow the reminder that those who lose their lives for him will find them, and those that find life without him will lose their lives. So in these three short verses, we find Jesus trying to get his disciples ready to be sent out. He's giving them instructions on the rewards that people will reap when they welcome the disciples into their lives. Now, often when we read these scriptures, we read them from a standpoint of something like this. If someone welcomes the disciples, then they are welcoming Jesus by extension into their lives, and they'll reap the reward God has for them. And that is a good way to look at things. But there is also a danger that comes in the correlation to that thinking. You see, if we look at the other side of that, we could say that whoever doesn't welcome the disciples of Jesus or Jesus himself, well, tough luck for them. So does that let the disciples off the hook? You don't want me, you don't want Jesus, well, find your loss. I don't think that we can afford to allow ourselves to take that view of this scripture. We can't allow ourselves to say, well, I tried and they didn't want to listen about Jesus, so I'm just moving on. You see, if we believe what we say we believe, then reaching people for Jesus is our calling as disciples. And if we believe that we, what we say we believe, then bringing to people to Jesus is a matter of eternal life or eternal death. If we don't have a little bit of stick to itness when we're talking with people, then I assure you we will fail in our mission. Very rarely do you find someone in that right moment in their life, the first time that you meet them, that they are ready to come to Jesus during one interaction with a person. So we have to be persistent. Now, I'm not telling you to go out there and badger people. I don't think that's the effective way to carry out our mission. So then what are we to do? What do we do when our first attempts fail? Well, I think we can look at our scripture for today to find what we need. You see, our scripture for today can really be stripped down into one big idea, and that is hospitality. So what does it mean to be hospitable? Well, if we look at the kind of Webster's definition of being hospitable, it is creating an environment in which something can grow. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, pastor, 
We are a hospitable people. Look at the way that we welcome people when they come into the church. We couldn't possibly be more hospitable. We make sure we go over to them. We say hello. We make sure they know they're welcome. We talk to them and learn about them and make them feel as if they belong. And I will tell you that, yes, we do that well. If someone new happens to walk through our doors, we are extremely hospitable to them. In today's modern terms, we call it like radical hospitality, right? That's what we're always shooting for. But I have to tell you, there has never been a church that has existed that doesn't believe that they are the most welcoming church that has ever been. By and large, they are correct. There are countless books written on the subject of how to welcome people when they visit your church. And I do believe that we do this well. But the idea of hospitality and welcoming does not begin and end when someone comes to the church. We have to be a people that are hospitable to others in our daily lives. Think about it this way. There's 168 hours in a week. How many do you spend in church? Maybe two a week. So let's say you spend two hours a week in the church and you're banking on that for your time to be hospitable to a person. Well, that works out to being less than 1% of your time during that week. So that means you are wasting 99% of the time that you have in a week to be hospitable to people. See, we need to begin to turn our hospitality outward from the church and taking it to others outside of these walls. Now, I know that this can be a scary idea. In order to be hospitable to people, we have to be willing to open up to the people that we meet. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Pastor, have you been outside lately? Have you seen how crazy it is out there? Have you seen how scary? And I know that the state of this world is less than ideal. But how do we expect to change to ever happen if we're not willing to be the ones to help start it? Often when I think about these things, the state of the world and what it's like to be a Christian today and go out and talk to other people, I think about the first disciples in the world in which they lived in. Now those first disciples were actively being hunted because of their faith. And yet they took it to new people. So what do we face on a day like today? Well, nothing like they did but our own difficulties. So we have to have the faith to step out and meet people where they are if we ever hope to bring people to Christ. Our sermons over the few, these few weeks are focused on growing as a disciple of Christ. So how do we grow in our hospitality? Well, I think like most other things, the way that we grow is that we try and we fail. Yes, you heard correctly. I believe we try and we fail. We offer the hospitality of Christ to all that we meet, and sometimes we fail. But in those failures, we learn. We learn what it takes to connect with people, and we learn what fails when we try. So thinking in those terms, what have you tried that has failed? And what could you have done differently? Often the response we hear is, nothing. I was perfect in my approach. It was that person that failed. They failed to accept what I was telling them about Jesus. Maybe. But as I said earlier, I don't believe that's good enough on our part. I think the secret to what we need to be doing is also found in those verses today. The first key to hospitality is to be welcoming. Now, welcoming means that when we meet a person, we welcome them for who they are right then and right at that point in their life. Would it be a wonderful world if we all lived up to the high calling that Jesus has on our lives? Yes, it absolutely would be. But expecting someone that you have just met or someone that has never come to know Christ to be on that level is not fair to them. 
I want to tell you a quick story. When I was a young man around the age of 13, before we moved to Pennsylvania, I was at a football game on Friday night. Um, it was the homecoming game that year, and I was there with my then girlfriend. Um, Carlin has asked that when I tell this story, I make it abundantly clear it was not her. So while we were sitting there at the football game, I was uh, kissing on her rather inappropriately, as it turns out. Obviously not something you should be doing in public. And at halftime, I noticed that my dad has walked down from the away side stands as he was sitting on the other side, I was sitting on the home side. And I see him walking and I notice that he climbs down the stands and he's walking around the end zone and he's coming over to the home side of the stands. And I thought, huh, I wonder what he's doing. And I noticed that he's walking pretty quickly as he's approaching the home side. I didn't think too much of it, but then out of nowhere, I realized that he is standing at the end of the row that I am sitting in. And there was a very stern look on his face, and I heard these words, come with me, boy. Now, I knew I must have done something wrong, but I wasn't sure what it was that I had done. But I knew by the tone of his voice, I was in trouble. He told me that it was inappropriate for me to be kissing on my girlfriend in public the way that I was, and I shouldn't be doing that. And he asked me, what were you thinking? And I told him, I honestly didn't know what I was doing was wrong. And to his credit, he looked at me and said, you know what? I've never told you that it was wrong. It's not a discussion that we had had, but now you do know, so don't do it again. You see, we can be like that when we meet people, when they're doing things that we think are wrong. We can, take the, we can take the approach of getting angry with them. How can you do this? How dare you be doing that? But in truth, do we ever stop and ask ourselves, do they really know better? And if, we don't, and if they don't know, then how can we expect them to be acting right in the first place? See, that is where our hospitality and our ability to meet people where they are right now in their lives is important. We said that being hospitable means creating a space where people are able to grow. And I think that's what we need to do when we meet people. See, there's no one in this world that wants to hear what they are doing is wrong. But does that mean that we allow them to keep sinning? No, it doesn't. But if we want to help them change, then we have to do it from a place of understanding or trying to understand where they are instead of a place of just judging them for the mistakes they're making. The second thing I think we can take away from our scripture and how we grow our hospitality is the part about giving someone a cool glass of water. You see, when you read that, and when I read that, I think, well, who would need a cold glass of water? Well, it's someone that is thirsty, right? If you weren't thirsty at all, why would you need a cold glass of water? And so for what that means to us, is if we're being hospitable, we need to find a way to give people what they need. Are they hungry? Let's feed them. Are they in need of clothing? Let's clothe them. Whatever it is, let's help them. And let's show them the meaning of Christian love. I think that if we want to grow as disciples, it is important for us to think with the hearts of servants. We have to find ways to help those in need in the place where they are right now so that they can grow in their relationship with Christ. And if we can do that, we will truly be showing people what hospitality really means. My challenge for you this week is this. Find one way to serve someone else this week. And then do it. Amen.